go to the moon and discontinue and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure like the color go, 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 of our energies and our skills. Because that challenge go, is one go, go, that we're willing go, to accept. Go, 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 one we are go, willing go, to go, 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 and one that we're willing to Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to How to Hone, a.k.a. Own Your Mental Health in the Cybersecurity Field. My name is I'm Charles Shearer, but I go by the name of the BSD Bandit on um, Twitter and, um, of course, Charles Shearer by um, LinkedIn. Um, super excited to be here. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, 23 years in this industry alone, and that's not just like with cybersecurity, just as in IT alone. Ooh, that's a long time. Um, <laughs> um, graduate of Virginia State, class of 2003. Um, I'm a husband. I'm a father. Um, huge retro gamer. So anything related to like Commodore 64, Sega Genesis, um, Transformers. Um, I recently gave a birthday shout out to um, not only Transformers, but Voltron. Um, just passionate about people in general and about life. I, I, I just enjoy um, just speaking with people and um, hanging out with folks, right? So the purpose of this talk today in honor of uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, um, I wanted to do a talk related to uh, mental health and how it has a toll on our cybersecurity industry, right? Um, so hopefully from this talk, you get some, maybe some tips or um, maybe something that you can build upon to help you through your journey. What I'm going to talk about tonight is what helps me through my journey. Um, so, and feel free, if you have any questions during this um, presentation, please feel free to stop me. I'll answer any questions that you have. I'm definitely an open book. So let's do it. All right, let's get, let's get started. Um, as you all know, with um, cybersecurity, um, there's a lot of pressures when it comes to working in this field, as you all know. I'm going to move this to the side here a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, cool. Um, feel the pressures of like like high workloads. You you got, um, and someone mentioned it earlier before we even started, um, before we even started, um, AI. Um, a lot of people get nervous about, you know, will AI take my job? Um, the pressures of life, uh, you know, things happen as we're at work. We got friends, family, um, you know, medical expenses, um, and I talk about this a little bit as well too. skills gap, you know, how can I keep up with the ever changing landscape of cybersecurity? Um, definitely um, economic uncertainty, especially with all the layoffs that's been happening over the last several months that, uh, you know, folks have been um, focused on um, high workloads, uh, you know, because we're understaffed, the, the workload has increased. So that adds to the pressures that um, a lot of cybersecurity folks actually faced, um, you know, and of course, the isolation piece when, you know, you're pretty much just working on a lot of projects by yourself and you're under the pressure of this insane deadline. And a lot of times it gets to you, you know, that's when it like starts um, coming down on you, which I call that, you know, part of like the, in the next slide here, this is called the hamster wheel of life. I call it right. Um, I look at life as like one big digital hamster wheel. And what I mean by a digital hamster wheel, as we're going through life, we're constantly moving, we're constantly going. And, you know, if you've made, I guess, like a million dollars this year, you're trying to make more than that next year, or, you know, you're trying to get to that next certification, you're trying to get that big promotion, you're trying to start your company, you're trying to start a family, you're trying to do all of these different things throughout life, trying to take care of your family, you know, parents may be ill, you may be going through something um, health wise, you know, these are things that um, a lot of that factors into the digital hamster wheel of life. And what I want to talk about here today is more so like, how do we control the wheel? How do we take control? You know, because a lot of times as we're going, it's like we're we're in motion, but we're not mentally there. And this is why mental health pay, plays a huge part in 
cybersecurity altogether because now that we're not mentally there, we're questioning everything. We're doing like, hey, I need to study more. I need to study more. Or we'll look at accomplishments online. We'll look at other people's accomplishments online just saying, um, okay, this one might've got a certification. This one might've got a promotion. This one might've started a business. What am I doing wrong? How come I can't get to that next level? Um, why does why do I feel like that AI is going to replace my job? Am I not needed anymore? Do I even have anyone that can help support me as I'm going through a difficult time? These are things that we're, we're constantly thinking. Of. And then you get to the point where you don't know whether it's night or day when when all these pressures start to mount up. You, you, you're you just constantly going, but it's kind of like you're running on autopilot and you don't know where to stop. And stress is a big factor. We also got to factor in work-life balance. That also adds to the pressures of the digital hamster wheel as well, too. Because you're realizing, like, okay, all I do is work, 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 work. But you look on the other hand, it's like, okay, I have a family here. I have friends. I haven't been on a vacation in a while. I haven't done this. I'm trying to balance it out, but nothing seems to be working. As soon as you have time, you think you might have time to take a vacation, that's when more work gets added to your plate. And then you feel like you have to complete that work before you get to the next vacation. But that next vacation never comes. So now you're looking at more work. Instead of balancing work life, it's work and life is just falling by the wayside. And this goes with whether it's people, relationships, um, just vacations, just taking time for yourself, self-care. And then, of course, um, your mental falls into place as well, too. And once you start falling into those um, categories, that's when things become even more difficult to try to break out. Right. So as we're going through this thing called life in the digital hamster wheel, I want you to always remember that although that this stuff keeps mounting up, eventually, if it's too much pressure, eventually you burn out, you give up, judgment starts setting in. And what I mean by judgment, self judgment. A lot of times when we're in a situation where constantly, as I talked about earlier with um, social media, right? We'll look at other people's accomplishments on social media and be like, okay, how come I can't do that? Maybe, maybe, maybe I just don't have the skill set. I just can't cut it. Um, this, this person has all these certifications. This person has this year's experience. This person makes this amount of money. I can't, I just can't seem to get there. Um, nobody wants to give me a chance or I'm in this, I'm in this rut. I've been here for 10 years and I haven't gone anywhere. You know, why am I not living the dream? Oh, it's Monday morning. I don't feel like getting out of bed this morning. Um, may, I, I, I just, I just wanted to take a break, but I can't take a break because I have all this work piled up on me. And if I don't do the work, nobody else would be able to do it. And I'm stuck in this loop of judgments and I'm constantly critiquing myself. We are our own hardest critique when it comes to ourselves. We critique ourselves the hardest, right? So these, this is kind of going down the path of towards uh, burnout, especially in the cybersecurity field. Um, and, and we all do it. We've all, we've all um, had that moment. I've had that moment. Everybody has had that moment. If you haven't had that moment, you're not human, you know? So this is, this is, this is all of us here, right? We, we self critique, we self judge, we self, inflict i call it right so another thing that adds to that judgment and the self in self infliction a big thing called social media social media a lot of times it can aid into that burnout process and when you're constantly looking online you may have posted something let's look at uh, like with cyber security right for example you may have posted something that you think hey this this looks pretty cool. Let me just um post this. But then you might get some comments like, oh, you're such a noob, or you don't know what you're doing, or why would you even post this? Or it's just constant critique of what you're putting online. You know, you could put a picture saying you're having a great day, and it could be someone who's also hurting and having struggles on their own, but they inflict their pain on you. So that's more added pressure on the social media circuit, right? 
these are things where social media can take a toll on you, right? When you're looking at the comments and like, wow, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not there yet. Maybe that person is really is more elite than I am in cybersecurity talk. Um, maybe I'm just not ready for that job. I'm not ready to take that plunge. Look at this comment right here that somebody said on Facebook. They just literally said, or or Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. They just said that my blog post was was worthless. I, I have nothing to offer here. So why do I keep doing this to myself? You know, and then that's when again that all adds to the job. For a second, but that adds to the judgment piece. That adds to everything that you're you're going through. The pressures of life, the digital hamster wheel, all of these things count and and start mounting on you. Family, um, family may be um, requesting your time, but you feel like you don't have enough time because you have to focus on what's here. Because if you don't focus on what's here, then you might lose this particular job, or you might be laid off because you're not good enough because of performance. All of these mounting pressures actually happen to us all as we're, we're thinking about these things with judgments and critiquing ourselves. And eventually it leads to burnout. And these are the signs of the burnout. Of course, you start getting headaches. You start not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. You start not wanting to live life. You just, you sleep a lot more, you know, caffeine, you really load up on caffeine or or um, whatever it is that you're, you you know, um, some people on pain medicines, unfortunately, right? Um, they just feel irritable all the time. They're difficult to be around. These are all signs of, of, of burnout. And these are all things that can really take a toll, not, on, not only on your cybersecurity career, but you as a person, both physically and, and of course, mainly mentally. I will tell you this. And since we're into computers, right? And this is, these are, and again, these things that you've seen, I've been through before myself as well, too, uh, many, many years ago. And I I had to crawl out of that thing. I had to figure out, and, and I'm going to talk to you about the tips and trips that still help me to this day to keep going, right? Um, again, you get to this point where it's just complete burnout. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to even try you don't want to put forth any effort you also want to be and i talked about this earlier isolated you don't want to be around folks because you're you're, you're going through the signs of burnout you feel like that you don't belong anymore and these are things that occur to us all right so now now that we're here right we're at the burnout stage and 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 like i said i've been here before now that we have this in place, um, I want to talk about some tips and tricks that help me, that can help if you're going through something like this right now, hopefully this can help you get to that next step and, and, and break out of this. I call it mental prison because it's all part of the mental health that affects everything else, right? And that's why I call it a mental prison. First and foremost, we're gonna turn the tide here, right? And this is something, again, that I had to wind up doing um fresh start i got to a point where you ever heard that saying sick and tired of being sick and tired that's how i felt that's how i got to that point you know and i can i can tell you this year this is all the way back this dates all the way back to 2012 okay so i just wanted to break out with a fresh start and just really just start over or in computer terms, I wanted to reboot. I wanted to reboot my life, not going back to a little kid, but reboot to everything that I was feeling like the burnout and low key depression. These are things I wanted to just get out of and break out of. So I decided take PTO, but instead of calling it paid time off, I call it the personal timeout. The personal timeout from from work, the person personal timeout from everything because I'm starting fresh, clean slate. I don't, I didn't care about what happened yesterday. I don't I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm focused on this moment right here and right now. So 
if you're in a situation where you're feeling the burnout and you're at your job, find somebody that you can, you know, really confide in. Um, definitely talk to the higher ups. Um, just let them know like, Hey, I'm not okay. I'm feeling overworked. I'm feeling the burnout, you know, whatever it is that you can talk to them about. Definitely want to get that off your chest and let someone know, right. What's going on. And again, there's no shame in not being okay. And these are things that I that I had to learn, right? If you're not okay, it's it's not a it's not a bad thing. Here's where you are, and here's where you can move on from not being okay to getting back to being okay, right? Starting with personal timeout, right? PTO. So first thing you want to just take time away from work, let your higher ups know what's going on. If you got that PTO, I definitely use it. If you want to call it personal timeouts, you can. <laughs> That's just the wordplay that I use when I want to do a personal timeout. Um, again, if you got vacation days, sick days, um, and a lot of companies, which I love seeing right now, is they have mental health days. Take those mental health days. If you got something going on and you just need a break, especially in these um, uncertain times, definitely take that break. You owe, you 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 earn that. That is for you. Nobody can take that away from you. So once you get on this personal timeout, you've talked to your boss or whatnot. Okay, now I've got my day set. I'm not thinking about work or the pressures of life. And this could, could this can mean family, could be dealing with something with family, could be dealing with something with maybe the business if you started a business. All of these right now do not matter because you're on personal timeout. And while you're on your personal timeout, these are a couple of things that um, has helped me that possibly can help you. Um, first off, standing up to, I call it the inner critic. And in my case, I actually call it, and, and you'll see it in a, in a couple of slides here later on, where I say, drop the judgment and join the journey. And what I mean by drop the judgment, enjoying the journey, stop critiquing yourself. You, your, your inner critic, let him know that I don't care what you say. Let your inner voice know I don't care what you say. That negative inner voice, because everybody has it once in a while. It kind of gives you that voice of doubt, just saying, you know what? I don't think you could do this. It gives you all the reasons why you can't do it instead of the reasons why you can do it. Take, remove that voice. Whatever you have to do, whether it's taking a walk or talking to somebody else or having that conversation or just just listening to some some motivational um, speeches or talks in general. But stand up. And that's why I put that here. Stand up to your inner critic. Stand up to that, because, again, only person on this earth that can stop you is you. Now, now, remember, we're still on personal timeout because we're working on ourselves. Work does not matter right now. Nothing else matters except you in this moment, right? Next thing, write about what you're going through, uh, whether it's a journal or you can pick up an iPad. Um, pick up an iPad and start writing things down. And it doesn't have to, it's, this is not for it to make sense to somebody else to read. Long as you understand it, it could be something as, simp as simple as a drawing that you know what that means or something that makes you smile or makes you a little bit happier, you know? takes you out of that not okay space to that okay space, right? Next thing, get it to some exercise. Try some, and it, it don't have to be Gold's Gym and everything else. You can start by simply breathing exercises in, in your house. Breathing exercises, breathe in, breathe out. Meditation is another good um, form. Um, I've tried meditation as well, too. Um, Yoga is very good. Um, I'm not the yoga genie. I'm I'm looking into it, but um, I haven't got started on the yoga journey yet, right? Um, even therapy. Um, check out therapy if you can. You know that that could be an option. There's no right or wrong way to getting you from that not okay space to that I'm okay space, right? And then again, use your support system if you've got close friends or close family members that you can that that family member that you can confide in. And talk to talk to them about in a safe space where you don't feel judged, 
or you don't feel like they're 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 going to talk down to you, reach out to that person if you can. You know, these are things that has definitely helped me personally, and hopefully it can it'll help whoever's going through anything. Right. Um, these are things that I would I would definitely recommend. And when you're taking walks, um, I don't know if any of you follow me on Twitter or whatnot. On Twitter, I like to just take a look at the the nature, the, something just simple as a sunrise or the moon is out, depending on when I'm outside, just taking a, a walk. Something as simple as that, I, I mean, that, that, that just kind of clears up a lot of different things. And what I mean by that is just kind of like, you know, something as a simple walk is just like, okay, this is my resetting moment. Look at that. You've gone mute. Um, look at that beautiful art. Look at that beautiful nature. You know, look up at the clouds, walk around. Maybe if you don't want to walk by yourself, walk with a walk with a friend or do pra practice breathing exercises with a friend. Right. But self-care is everything. Right. This is going to help you get from that not OK space to that I'm OK space. Right. Uh, um, and again, once again, um, therapy, if you feel comfortable going to therapy, I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it can it can work wonders. Right. Remember I talked about before, dropping the journey, dropping the judgment, joining the journey. Look at all those negative words that are related to judgment. You don't need that. That's a jacket that you shouldn't have to wear. And that's a jacket that no one should have to wear, period. Right? So take off that judgment jacket. Take off that self-critique jacket. Put on that journey jacket. Put on that jacket that says, hey, you know what? I don't care what's going on right now in my life. I'm right where I want to be, and I'm going to keep pushing to get to where I need to be mentally because this is where it's all start. Your mind is the greatest computer that you will ever own. So if you, if you want it to function properly, if you want your, your mental to function properly, these are things that's helped me personally. Hopefully this is something that can help you. And when you feel the time is right, or when, you know, you could get into the, the whole exercise. If you want to go deeper into exercising, that's perfectly fine. Weightlifting, running, yoga, sports, whatever, pickleball. Um, I see pickleball is very popular. Um, anything that you want to get into, maybe it's art, maybe it's drawing, anything that's going to relax your mental. Because when your mental is okay, this is when your physical helps as well, too. Because you ever hear the saying, if you think that you're sick, you're sick. That really is a real thing. If you if you wake up one morning, and just say, you know what? I don't feel good. I'm sick. Eventually, your mind starts to tell your body that it's sick. And then that's when you start having the symptoms of a sore throat. You feel, sl you feel sluggish. You feel like you don't want to get out of bed. Because your mind is telling you that, right? These are things that you 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 definitely. This is what definitely helps me when, as far as like getting out of that um, rut, and I call it a rut. So and and dropping the judgment jacket and putting on the join the journey jacket, um, it's 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 something that I definitely recommend trying. And of course, um, even after this presentation. Please, um, you know, if you want to talk and reach out to me, I'm I'm all ears. Um, here's a, another thing that I was talking about earlier, like exercise tips. Um, I'm actually um, going to be doing some swimming this summer as well, too. I like um, just being in the water and just like really like enjoying the summer, summertime. Um, dancing, aerobics, if you want to get into uh, for me, I love walking and just looking at nature. Um, if I run, I, I'll run on a treadmill. Um you know, running in nature is, is is tough for me sometimes because I don't know what animal is like trying to run with me. And that makes me nervous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> One time I was actually literally running outside and jogging outside and a fox was running with me. And yeah, when I say I, I was literally like running, like I felt like, felt like I was going to be bionic man. And eventually the fox stopped running and he kind of left me alone. I was like, okay, you know what? Anytime I need to run, 
it'd be treadmill from now on. If I want to walk, I will walk in nature. <laughs> That's pretty much it on that end. But um, and 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 something as simple as dancing or, or hanging out with your friends. You know, if you if you want to be outside, as everybody calls it, um, be outside. Um, get your dance on. You know, something that's going to help improve your mental and your physical, right? Because when your mental's right, a lot more things fall into place. Um, I I definitely recommend that. That that's helped um tremendously. And one thing I didn't um add on here, how you eat as well too. You know, food can help your um your mental capacity as well too. Something maybe something as simple as um fresh fruit, um vegetables, um just you know just constantly like try getting on a journey of eating healthy and this is where the journey journey comes in maybe you want to look at okay um i'm right here right now and it's not a, it's not a weight thing it's a more so a, a mental thing which will connect to the physical which from there then you can you know you, you pretty much can i call it you pretty much can hack your health right <laughs> since we're speaking of cyber security um terms here but I'm definitely walking, exercise, um, hanging out with your friends, just anything that's going to keep your mental capacity in place. These are the things that I do on a daily basis. This is what keeps me going. This is what keeps me smiling. This is what keeps me passionate about what I do. And I look at my mind as one big computer, the biggest computer that I will ever own. Um, that's the end of my talk. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach at, ask me any questions that you want. I'm open book. Um, my Twitter handle. Um, I, I pretty much live on Twitter. Um, <laughs> uh, you can definitely DMs are always open. Um, and, and LinkedIn as well too. So between LinkedIn and Twitter, that's where I can be reached. Whisper secrets unfold Binary nights in the digital cold 